help? Uh, yes, please. Set the table, dear. S uh, set the table? Um, I'll help you. Hmm? Ah. That's a good boy. The plates? Is your boyfriend Harold eating with us? No. Harold is in Oxford. Harold's bank has uh, an office in Oxford. Oh. The knives and forks. Knife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fork. And spoon. <laughs> Is the table set? Uh, yes, Agatha. Good. Sit down, please. Dinner is ready. Are we having dinner now? Why, of course, dear. What are we having? We are having soup and salad. Do you like chicken soup, Elena? Yes, thank you. Oh, please put the napkins on the table, Victor. Oh, sorry. Um, oh, here they are. My silly Victor. He forgets everything. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Here is your soup. Help yourselves to the bread. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Agatha. You're welcome, my dear. It's so nice to have you here. Yes, it's, it's nice to have you here. Thank you, Daddy. It's very kind. Nonsense. Now let's eat. <laughs> How's your soup? It's delicious. Mm. What's wrong, dear? Don't you like it? Well... You don't feel well? No, uh, I'm sorry. Mm, it is a bit early for me. I am not really hungry. Not hungry? Um, what time does your family um, eat dinner back in Spain? Uh, we eat dinner at 10 o'clock at home. Wow! Uh, imagine that. We're usually in bed before midnight. Elena, darling, you must forgive our strange English habits. No, it is all a bit strange for me now. My poor dear. You must be exhausted. Maybe you should go to bed uh, soon, Elena. Mm, yes, please. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. No, don't worry. You go in and sleep. Thank you both. Good night, Elena. Good night. Good night. Sleep well, dear. Not again, Agatha. Don't do this to me again. Why, my darling brother, what are you talking about? Hi there, everybody, and welcome back to your English lesson with me, Gabrielle. I'm sure the sitcom is becoming easier for you to understand, isn't it? Good. Now, we know that every country has its own traditions and customs, but poor Elena is very surprised to see how early the English eat dinner. Now, I don't mind eating early, especially when somebody else is preparing my dinner. Okay, today in our lesson, we are going to look at the possessive adjectives in English, like my, your, his. We are also going to look at ways of apologizing to people. To apologize means to say that you're sorry for doing something wrong. Okay, let's get started. First of all, let's go over the possessive adjectives. We have my, this is my bag. Then, your. I'm your teacher. His for masculine. This is his hat. Dylan is so handsome with his hat on. <laughs> but let's continue with possessives. Her for feminine. It's for things or animals. Our, your, and their. It's important to note that your and your, the contraction of you are, have the same pronunciation, so make sure you don't confuse them. This is your book and your very good students. 
Another important point is that the possessive adjectives never change. They stay the same whether the noun is singular or plural. So we can say my book or my books. Okay? Let's look at some examples. My friend Robert is American. Your friend lives in Madrid. His sister knows Heather very well. Her mother is a good cook. Lady Coco, my cat, loves its ball. Our father works in Toronto. Their house is beautiful. Remember that his sister is used to describe the sister of a man. For example, the sister of Sam, his sister. And her brother is used to describe the brother of a woman. For example, the brother of Jessica, her brother. Now, do you remember in the sitcom, Victor forgets to put the napkins on the table. So, he says sorry to Agatha. Well, sorry is a way of apologizing in English. We can also say, I'm sorry, or I apologize, which is slightly more formal. If you want to make the apology stronger, you can say, I'm so sorry. If you do something really bad, you can say, please forgive me. Now, if someone apologizes to you and you forgive them, you can say, don't worry. Like Agatha said to Elena, don't worry, you go and sleep. Or you can say, that's okay. Well, I hope you don't have to apologize too much in English. Anyway, that's enough for today. Thank you for working so hard, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye, everyone. Oh. Uh, good morning. You're up uh, early. Yes, I'm looking for, um, for my... Um, uh, for your keys? Yes. You're here. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Victor. <laughs> um, do your classes start today? No, uh, I start classes on Wednesday. Uh, I'm looking for a job today. Oh, um, it's a good idea to get the, uh, the paper early. <laughs> can, I, can I make you some tea? Uh, do you have coffee? Uh, sorry, I'm not sure if we have any coffee. Let me have a look. <laughs> Darling! Good morning. Uh, good morning, Agatha. Um, what a clever girl. You're doing morning exercises. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did you sleep well? Very well. Um, sorry, no coffee. Maybe we should add it to the shopping list. Oh, yes, yes. Tell me what you need. I'm going shopping with my sister, Betty. Oh, coffee would be nice. <laughs> well, what are your plans for today, sweetheart? Oh, she's uh, job hunting. She's looking for a part-time job. Oh, how industrious. Well, a pretty girl like you will have no trouble finding a job. Um, here's the paper. Oh, and uh, look, look, there's one. It's uh, here in Kensington. Mm. Hmm? Uh, video store on the high street. Oh, young person with excellent communication skills. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, and uh, afternoon shifts, uh, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, where is the high street? Just make a left at the top of our road onto Hornton and then make another left onto the high street. The store is on your right, next to the tube station. Uh, the, the tube? Um, I'll walk you up there, okay? Thank you, that is very kind of you. Oh, nonsense. My brother's a gentleman. <laughs>
Um, go get ready, and uh, I'll meet you downstairs in 15 minutes. Okay? Okay. Well, good luck, my dear. Have a nice day. Thanks. You too, Agatha. I'll see you in a little while. Bye. Bye-bye. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Are you ready for some serious studying? In today's sitcom, Elena looks in the newspaper for a part-time job with the help of Victor. That will really help her English. Working in a video store? Don't you think? Talking to people all day in English is a great idea. Now, in today's lesson, we are going to talk about the possessive case. This is Gabrielle's scarf. Lady Coco, do you remember her? Lady Coco is Gabrielle's cat. Then, we are going to study the days of the week. Monday, Tuesday, maybe you know some of them. And then, the numbers 1 to 12. Does that sound okay? All right, let's get started. So, I have a friend, Jade. She has gorgeous red hair, and she's a very good friend of mine. Jade has a brother. He's a student. I can make life much easier by saying Jade's brother is a student instead of using the brother of Jade. I can simply add apostrophe S and say Jade's brother. It's much simpler, isn't it? Let's look at some more examples, shall we? In English, instead of saying the mother of Peter, we say Peter's mother. A native English speaker doesn't say the book of Sarah. They say Sarah's book. We can say Agatha's boyfriend is very handsome. The cat's toy is in the box. The president's house is in Washington, D.C. You see, it sounds much better than the house of the president. You sound like a native English speaker already. Well done. Now, what day is today? Thursday? Saturday? I can never remember. Poor me. Hmm. Well, I know it's not Sunday because I don't normally work on Sunday. And I usually have a delicious dinner with Dylan, our Sunday roast. So, let's look at the days of the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Do you remember what day Elena starts class? She starts on Wednesday. And on which days is the job at the video store? Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay, let's look at some other words. If today is Monday, what day is tomorrow? Tomorrow is Tuesday. And what day was it yesterday? Sunday. Here's a tip. The second day of the week is Tuesday, which sounds a little bit like the number two. Remember that in English, we write the days of the week with a capital letter, okay? Oh, I said two. So let's have a look at the numbers. One to twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, let's see if you can do a little test. What is two plus three? Five, good! 
and five plus four? Nine. What about six plus six? Twelve. Good job. Well, today was an English and a math lesson. You are multi-talented. That's all for today. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hello. Hello. How was your day? Fabulous. Fabulous. <laughs> fabulous is excellent. I had a fabulous day too. Uh, going shopping. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Betty and I shopped all day. Look at my new nail polish. Oh. And this blouse is new. It <laughs> looks divine on me, don't you think? It's very beautiful. <laughs> and I have a skirt to go with it. Mm -hmm. And a pair of boots. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> of course, Betty is jealous. She says I spend too much money on clothes. <laughs> Hi, girls. <laughs> it's getting cold out there. I think it's going to rain. Oh, I hope oh. not. Mm. Had a productive day, Agatha? Yes. Mm. Delightful. <laughs> And uh, how was your uh, interview, Alina? Uh, productive. <laughs> I start work on Thursday after the school. Congratulations. Well done, darling. <laughs> and um, when do you finish work? Um, my shifts are from 3 to 7. Uh, and what will you do at, uh, at the store? I put the videos on the shelves. Mm. And I find information on the computer for uh, customers. Mm. I love movies! Do you know what my favorite movie is? No. What is your favorite movie? Butterfield 8. Well, any movie with Liz Taylor. Um, I don't know it. Agatha watches it a lot. Um, Betty has the video. Oh. I would like to see the movie too. You will love it. <laughs> Liz wears the most brilliant clothes and Lawrence Harvey oh. <laughs> what a man <laughs> do you like it Victor uh, it's a bit uh, old oh. for me uh, I prefer science fiction and fantasy stories um, wh when I finish my course I'd like to try painting sets for films oh that sounds exciting mm -hmm. speaking of clothing do you have a warm coat, Elena? Uh, this is my coat. Oh, you will die of cold in that coat. You will really need a, a warmer coat soon, Elena. It gets very cold in London. Mm. Not like sunny Barcelona. Madrid. Um, we might get some, some snow at Christmas. Snow? Ah, that will be a, a new experience for you. Yes. Mm. Oh, wonderful. You don't have school tomorrow. Let's go shopping. <laughs> okay, let's go shopping. <laughs> oh dear. Hello everyone, and welcome again to your English lesson. Oops, I've just been shopping. Do you like my dress? Do you think it suits me? It's new. Well, Agatha certainly loves shopping, doesn't she? Although I'm not sure that Victor approves. And how about Elena today? Getting the job at the video store. Clever girl. Well, enough of that. Are you ready to hear what grammar points we are going to look at today? Well, first, we are going to learn some question words, like what. What is it? It's my new dress. And where? Where are you now? I'm in the studio teaching my lesson. Then we will look at the verb to be in its interrogative and negative forms. Is it a new bag? No, it isn't. 
We will also look at the negative form of some other verbs in the present simple tense. I don't go shopping very often. Victor doesn't like shopping. Um, quite a lot to cover, so are you ready to begin? First, let's look at the question word how. A well-known example of this is how are you? I'm fine, thanks. How is she? She. Oh, my mom, Diane. She's very well, thank you. How old are you? It's not polite to ask a lady's age, but I'm pretty young anyway. How old are they? They are 36 years old. Then we have the question word, what, like in what's your name? My name is Gabrielle, as you know, and what's your friend's name? My friend's name is Jade. Do you remember the girl with red hair? Then we have where. Where are you from? I'm from New York. Where is he from? He's from San Diego. Oh, I love California. Do you notice how these questions are all useful when you are getting to know someone? They are great for discovering personal information. Then we have the word when, as in, when is your birthday? My birthday is in July. Yes, summertime. When is the party? Sure, my birthday party. Well, I haven't decided yet. And as Victor asked Elena, when do you finish work? <laughs> No, no, we have a bit more work to do today. So let's look at some other types of questions using the verb to be. Are you English? Is he German? Are they French? To make questions with the verb to be, we just invert the subject and the verb. So, I am a teacher becomes, am I a teacher? You are a student, are you a student? Do you see? To make sentences negative with the verb to be, we simply add the word not. I am not Italian. We are not Chinese. He is not Scottish. When we speak English, we usually contract the negative form of the verb. So, I am not Italian becomes, I'm not Italian. You are not Indian is, you aren't Indian. He is not French becomes, he isn't French. We are not is, we aren't and they are not, they aren't. The final thing I want to look at today is adding don't or doesn't to make present simple verbs negative. Here's an example. I speak Spanish. I do not speak Spanish. Do not is contracted to don't. I don't speak Spanish. You don't speak German. Agatha says to Elena, you don't have school tomorrow. <laughs> Lucky girl, she can go shopping then. In the third person singular, we say, she does not or doesn't like pizza, <laughs> which in my opinion is impossible. He doesn't live in the city. Notice how we cut off the S from the verb when we make the sentence negative. He likes tea. He doesn't like tea. Well, 
I think tea sounds like a great idea. I think I will go and relax with a nice cup of tea. You can relax too. You worked hard today. Well done and see you next time. Bye.